This is the Elegoo Mars 3 Pro. You fill this tank with resin, and this is the build plate. So it prints uh, with everything attached here. And when you're done, you unscrew this, you pull it off, and you take it over to your cleaning vat. This is the cleaning tank. Uh, it's the Elegoo Mercury. Um, split uh, washing and the curing station is just over here. So you wash it in IPA or isopropyl alcohol. I've got this 99% isopropyl here. You fill this tub and you clean your parts after they've been printed. You get rid of all the uncured resin uh, before curing them with UV lights. The only issue is that this stuff gets really dirty uh, and this has been sitting for a few days. So everything has fallen to the bottom, but we're gonna agitate this to show you what that looks like. So you can see that this is pretty gross. Uh, so my solution to this has been to buy a secondary tank and print out a filter holder. So I've got these filters. I've got this holder that I designed and printed off on my FDM printer. And they just fit in like that and I'll pour all the contents from here into here and we'll see what gets caught in here and how the IPA looks once it's in the second uh, container here. So if you didn't hear me, I said wear a mask. Uh, be sure to wear your safety equipment while doing this. Uh, it is a somewhat dangerous chemical and that resin is toxic when it's uncured. So wear some nitrile gloves and a face mask, uh, preferably with a vapor cartridge to filter out uh, all of the IPA and any of the fumes that are coming off of that uncured resin. This whole process took a lot longer than I thought it would. It took about 20 minutes in total. Um, the filter started to get clogged uh, pretty quick on every single go. So I actually ended up using three or four filter papers in this whole process. Here I am squeezing the IPA through this filter paper that's gotten pretty clogged and really slow. Uh, so I squeeze it all out and then I put it aside to cure the paper to make sure that it's inert before throwing it away. At this point I'm at the end of the IPA and I'm just shaking it around to get any of the little bits left in the bottom of the bin out and hopefully into the filter. I'm also going to grab a paper towel and just wipe the inside corner where I've been pouring from to get rid of those last few little pieces that are in there. I'm almost done with this first bucket. I'm just gonna pour some fresh IPA into it just to like cover that spinning piece in the bottom because I don't want that to seize up with any of the uncured resin that might still be uh, sitting on those moving parts. So I just want it to sit in fresh IPA while I store it until I use it the next time. Before shooting this video, I skimmed half of the IPA off the top after it settled. Uh, and this is me just pouring that back into the container and so we can kind of see what the losses are because it should have come up to that line in the bin but it's not quite making it there so then we fill this back up with fresh ipa just so that we meet that line here's all the stuff that we caught on that last pour you can see those little bits of uh, cured resin just sitting in there and that would have been in the bottom of our bin before I've also printed this coaster looking drip tray to catch any drips coming off of the filter holder. Now for some cleanup, I'm going to put the paper towels and the paper filters in the curing station, followed by the filter in a couple different orientations, uh, just to make sure that anything that's on there has been cured and I'm not dripping uncured resin all over my workstation. Uh, and also so that I can throw out the paper towel and the filters uh, knowing that they are now inert and aren't going to cause as much damage as uncured resin. 
If you've made it this far, be sure to hit that subscribe button because you like 3D printing stuff too. Uh, but feel free to hit that dislike button if you've stuck around just out of spite. And let's take a look at the design process for these two parts. All right, let's start with the simpler of the two parts. So this is the coaster or the filter cup stand as I've called it here. Um, so here it is in SolidWorks, my modeling program of choice. Um, Let's roll this back to the initial part. We start with a boss extrude, which means that I just made a sketch of a circle. I extruded it up by 10 millimeters. I used the shell tool and made it a two millimeter shell around. Followed that up with a boss extrude in the middle here. So I sketched a rectangle and extruded it up. And then I used a circular pattern to repeat this around this way so that it had a stable base and it had places to drain out into. And I didn't connect the ends because I wanted it to be able to drain into the different sections if one got too full um, and it wasn't distributing equally. And that's it for this. I added another sketch and a coordinate system for exporting, but that's the gist of this part. Let's take a look at the actual filter holder. All right, so here we are with the filter holder and let's roll this thing back to the loft. So a loft is basically a projection of one shape onto another and you can use a guide curve to guide where it's going from one point A to point B. So I have a circular sketch at the top, a smaller sketch at the bottom and I have one more line just connecting the two so that this makes a nice uh, funnel shape. And then I shell that out. Uh, you'll see a theme. Uh, shell is a super powerful feature and I use it a lot in 3D printed design. I'll do a cut extrude. So I made a sketch of a circle and then this little cutout here that I'm going to fill it. So I do these little rounded corners in that cutout as a feature. And then I do a circular pattern because I want a bunch of these cutouts. And then I do a boss extrude here for the uh, handle bits. And I mirrored that. I could have made that all one part in the boss extrude, but you know, hindsight. <clears throat> Here's a fillet. Just add some rigidity to those arms um, and some strength because uh, when you just have a part coming out of there right away and there's no fillet, um, it can be a bit weaker depending on how thick you've made these arms. I boss extrude down. I mirror that onto the other side. And then I do two sets of fillets just to get it a little bit more rounded and looking a little bit better. And I do a sketch and a coordinate system just for exporting purposes. So that's the process of getting from no part to a part. And I hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.